When the liquid is a glycerin solution and the speed is low, the zone of appreciable fluid deformation is quite large. As the speed is increased, the deformation zone is more closely restricted to the vicinity of the body. When the glycerin is replaced by water, the zone becomes still narrower, and at sufficiently high Reynolds numbers, it is aptly called a boundary layer. The pressure distribution on the body can then be evaluated according to the approximately irrotational flow outside the boundary layer, and the distribution of shear according to the fluid deformation within the highly rotational region of the boundary layer itself. A type of Euler number that indicates the effect of separation is known as the drag coefficient. The longitudinal force exerted by the flow per unit projected area in its ratio to the stagnation pressure. For extreme degrees of separation, as must occur at the edges of this disk, measurement of the pressure distribution at the numbered piezometers on the front and rear faces will show the cause of the drag. As air now begins to flow from left to right, the front of the disk becomes subject to positive pressure and the rear to appreciable suction. The integral of the pressure distribution will yield the same force as that measured on such an air tunnel dynamometer. The high drag of the yellow disk can be reduced appreciably by adding a rounded front, which minimizes the curvature of the separation surface and thus somewhat alleviates the pressure reduction at the rear. Separation is almost completely eliminated by adding a well-fared tailpiece to reduce the adverse pressure gradient. Since there can be no resistance to steady irrotational flow around the body without separation, practically the only resistance now is that of shear within the boundary layer. Under optimum conditions, the process called streamlining can reduce the drag some 95%. Since the resisting force varies with the projected area of the body, as well as with its shape, at the same velocity, this streamlined form would then produce no more resistance than a disk of less than a quarter its diameter. A sphere is intermediate between poor streamlining and good streamlining. As can be seen from the distribution of pressure measured at the numbered piezometers, when flow takes place from left to right, the low pressure at the rear, compared with the high pressure at the front, indicates that separation still occurs. As is shown by injecting smoke into the wake, the line of separation is even ahead of the midsection. Making the boundary layer turbulent prematurely by a tripwire tends to reduce the separation tendency, as is evident from the shift of the separation point to the rear of the midsection. Compared with a body producing two-dimensional flow, like this long plate, a more nearly axisymmetric body like a square, has a much higher weight pressure and hence a much lower drag per unit area. The drag coefficient of a square plate, therefore, is increased by cutting it into more nearly two-dimensional strips and slightly separating them. A body that is in the wake of another, being in a zone of reduced velocity, experiences a great reduction in drag as any cyclist who is coasted along behind a truck is well aware. The circular streamlines of an irrotational vortex are all lines of constant circulation, for the velocity varies inversely and the circumference directly with the radius. Now, if the velocity field of such a vortex is superposed upon the velocity field of irrotational flow around the body, say a circular cylinder, the velocity on the one side will be augmented and on the other side diminished in proportion to the relative strength of the circulation. And the flow pattern will change accordingly. Where the velocity is increased, the pressure will be reduced and vice versa, so that a side thrust will be exerted upon the cylinder. 
A mixed coefficient can be written for a vein of length L and chord C as the lifting force per unit vein area in its ratio to the stagnation pressure. According to the circulation theory of lift, this coefficient is proportional to the relative circulation, which in turn is proportional to the sign of the angle of attack of the vein. A plot of the measured lift coefficient against angle of attack shows good agreement with the circulation theory at small angles, but a great deviation at high angles as the phenomenon known as stall occurs. By means of smoke filaments, the gradual development of stall, or leading edge separation, is readily seen from the change in flow pattern around this symmetrical vein, as its angle of attack is continuously increased. Isometers at the numbered points around the profile of a vein show that in a steady cross flow, the circulation induced with growing angle of attack produces a pressure below and a suction above the vein, the difference increasing as the angle of attack increases till stall suddenly occurs. As seen from this polar diagram of lift versus drag, a well-designed lifting vein will display an efficiency or ratio of lift to drag as high as 25 or 30. This is for an aspect ratio, length over cord, that is very great. As the aspect ratio decreases, however, the ratio of lift to drag steadily diminishes. This is because of a tip effect, much like that of the shortened plate, in which flow occurs around the end and diminishes the pressure difference. Near the middle of a vein, smoke filaments show only a two-dimensional separation effect. Near the end, however, as the vein is inclined, first this way and then that, the pressure on one side and suction on the other give rise to an additional circulation effect, an intense tip vortex. This end view of the same foreshortened vein shows the growth of the tip vortex to perfection. The resulting flow directly behind the vein has a downward component called downwash, which necessarily increases with decreasing aspect ratio. Lifting vanes are used not only for the wings of airplanes, but also under modern hydrofoil boats to lift the hulls completely out of the water. This is an experimental Grumman craft being tested for the maritime administration. Elimination of wave resistance obviously leads to much greater speed and stability. <laughs>